from the John DeVita Broadcast Center. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Paranormal Radio with Bob Trisek on the Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network. So sit back and enjoy Paranormal Radio. And now here is the number one Paranormal King, <laughs> Mr. Bob Trisek. Thank you, John. Yeah, it's been um, a little bit of a time span there. We um, do the shows, I think the last one we did was May. Sometimes I'll sneak in like an early June one, and then we take off the summer months, and then we pick the show back up again in the fall. So this is our first show uh, in three months that we're doing, our first new show that we're taping. Um, October is going to, I don't know. <laughs> if I can do an October show, we're going to get an October show in. Um, if we just can't do it, we can't because the October schedule is very, I want to do it for certain for the month of October. I'd like to do the show, but maybe even I might switch today or something. I don't know, but I don't know which day I'd switch it to because one day for October is just as bad as the next. It's a very full schedule. Um, announcements. Uh, first off, I just want to announce my guests who we've got coming on tonight. A couple of repeat folks and then a brand new uh, young lady that we've got coming on here who I've wanted to meet for some time. I've known about her for some time. I've seen things up on her Facebook and things about her and that's so I'm very delighted to have her with us tonight. Uh, that would be Miss Mambo J. Marie. And then we've got Mr. Dominic I always do your name wrong, Posey Posey. You got it right, Posey. Posey. Yeah. I said it right, Posey, Dominic Posey, and Mr. Ron Powell. So I'm ha very happy to have the gentleman back. And then, of course, Mr. Leland Pearson. Leland's busy fooling around with the computer. Uh, he's fooling around with Facebook for us. He's going to do something um, where we're going to go on Facebook, and we're going to try doing like a Facebook Live where you can see us on Facebook, and then eventually like maybe do some questions and do some participation with that so we can get maybe some audience to participate into the show a little bit in that. Um, so he's working on that. It would have been nice if he would have come here about 15 or 20 minutes early. He could have done that ahead of time. But, you know, Leyland, he's got to stop at the bar first before he gets here, and he just he doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't have time for that. So, you know, <laughs> no, I'm, okay. I'm kidding. No, Leyland is cool. He's just, he, Leyland's got a very heavy schedule, too. So it's, I'm just very happy that he's agreed to do the co hosting with me. I was going to have him read the announcements uh, because I decided I don't give Leyland enough to do. Uh, I said, usually it's me talking, and then after I do the show, I says, no, I didn't give him a chance to talk. So here, you want to do the announcements? Sure, oh, for the first two I'm going to do, because you won't know who the, everybody else, you'll know who they are. Uh, but then after that, I want to talk about Mr. Lou Griffin. Lou is cool. Lou is, when, every time when I come up here to do the shows, I come early to avoid the traffic and everything, and then that's my day to go into the mall. We do the shows at 7 at night, but I'm in the mall usually like at 1 in the afternoon, and... Um, I stop in and I get my hair cut. Uh, Lou does, uh, he's got the little kiosk there where he does um, hair cutting and, and barbering there and um, got me in today to do a haircut for me. And it just happened that somebody canceled their appointment and he could take me in. And Lou also runs a um, photography and videography business under Guru Films. Um, you can get a hold of Lou at 1-312-459-9792, and you can always stop in the mall. He's uh, in the Harlem, not the mall I'm talking about, is the Harlem Irving Plaza Mall on Irving Park Road, Harlem and Irving Park Road, I should say. And um, he's got a little kiosk there where he does haircuts right in front of Red Robin in the mall. You know, the Red Robin, that's usually where I go and have lunch after he cuts my hair. Um, and then in Red Robin, I met an interesting person today. Uh, the young lady that was taking care of me, the server, um, I don't know exactly how we got. Oh, I know how we got on the subject. She's, yeah, we haven't seen you in a while. I said, yeah, I come up once a month to do this. And I said, I do the radio here. I do paranormal radio. So when I said paranormal, she got very interested in it. And she sent another person out. And that person happened to be Donna. And Donna was sitting down with me and gave me some good stories and some stuff. And she actually, um, in Bachelor's Grove, she claims to actually have seen the woman in white, the lady sitting on the headstone. And she actually saw her sitting on the headstone. And I talked with her a little bit about that. And I got her phone number down, so I'm going to be getting a hold of her um uh, a little more and talking to her a little more in detail on that and maybe eventually we'll get her as a guest on the show here with that. Okay, Leland, you can do the announcements now. Right. Uh, the Kildare people were supposed to come from Kildare Haunted City. They decided not to show up today for whatever reason. It's all right with us, but we're still going to do an announcement for them and then all this other stuff down here too. And then also too, you guys, as you go on, plug all your own stuff too. Anything you got going on? And where, am I, where am I starting here, sir? You're starting... Kildare? Right, right, start with Kildare and then just work right, your way down cool. there. Hi, oh, how's... Hi ho, how everybody doing? So announcements today, Kildare Haunted City starting September 30th at 8, 81.10. Was that fair? Where, I don't know, what did I write? I'm not sure. <laughs> Probably should not let me read announcements. 81.10 Ferdinand Avenue. Ferdinand, 81.10 okay. Ferdinand Avenue in Bridgeview. Uh, they're behind the Park District building. Uh, they'll be starting their Halloween season October 30th. Yeah. There. 
group. Anytime you need help, just ask. <laughs> okay. It's a uh, midnight terror haunt on a on 111th Street, a few blocks off Cicero, right across from the Chapel Hill Cemetery. I believe that starts September 16th. No, September 30th. <laughs> oh, September 30th. Okay. Then Saturday, September 16th, Worth Public Library. On, oh, that's me. That's you. Oh, yeah. I'll try not to mess this one off then. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 111th Street, about one block off of Harlem, Library Celebration Anniversary? Yeah, they're doing, I don't know what they're doing exactly, but I know I'm going to be there for palm readings. Well, you'll be doing yeah. palm readings from uh, 1230 to 230, question mark, so. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure how long, but I'll be there. Let's see, yeah. uh, next up, we have uh, Tuesday, September 19th, the, what is this, the Center Palos Hill Oak Park Lunch Game Show. Yep, that's what I'll be doing over there, a game show. No, it's some... nothing to do with the paranormal. I'm nope. doing, doing a game show, presentation on game shows, and then we're going to do a game show there with them, too. And that's at the Center in Palos, is either Palos Park or Palos Hills, I'm not sure which one it is. So it's right off the of Southwest Highway there, yeah. Mm -hmm. See, uh, Thursday, mm -hmm. uh, the 21st, Center of Strickland Park District Paramo Paranormal Cemetery Tour. You got a phone number here listed. You want me to read it off? Yeah, go ahead. I think they still need. I think they might have a couple of seats still for that one. So go ahead and give me your right, number. All right. So this is the phone number if you want to book a paranormal cemetery tour. It is 708-496-8292. Moving on, we have man, it is a busy September. Yeah, yeah. And October is <laughs> getting worse. I'm sure. Yeah, we'll have three or four pages. Then. Oh yeah. <laughs> you can watch me struggle then. Uh, Friday, yeah. September twenty second. Chinatown Worth Park District uh, tour. It's sold out. Yeah, that one we sold out. All yeah. right. But well, give them a call. Just in case somebody canceled, give them a call. Yeah. So if you want to try to get on there, the uh, phone number for that is 708-448-7080. Let's see. Uh, moving on to Thursday, September 28th. Now, Should wait a minute. That's the 22nd. That night, the 22nd, after I do the Chinatown tour, oh. I'll be at the LSIP library. Oh, and I'm they're having, miss that. See? See, I'm not I, I remember what I wrote. <laughs> yeah, we're having, we're, having the, we're having the Fall Fest. They're having their Fall Fest at the library, and it's a free event. They're having food. They're having some, some famous hot dog place. I don't know who the famous hot dog place is, but they're going to be there making hot dogs, and they're having some kind of donut, mini donut machine, something. Nice. With that, they have entertainment, music. I'll be there doing palm readings. So I got a lot of stuff going on, and it's totally free. And that's right on, oh, like 120th in Pulaski the LSIP uh, Public Library, and I'll be there from 6.30 on. After I do the Chinatown tour, I get like an hour or two off, and then I'll come home and uh, go there and do that. And I'll be there from 6.30 on doing palm readings with them. Great. Let's see. Uh, Thursday, September 28th, Justice Library, right off at Archer, across the street from the... Bethania Cemetery. Thank you. Vampires. Yeah, talking about vampires. All about vampires. Got a lot of information on vampires that I want to share. And um, so it could be a night or day. It's that's a night presentation. It's, 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 you will wear garlic. It's a six thirty presentation. I'm, vampires are big this year. I'm doing the vampire presentation at three different places. But the other two are in October. I'm not even announcing the October stuff yet. Well, now that yeah. we're doing the live stream, you can show off your uh, your Edward tattoo from Twilight. <laughs> do I do I have an Edward? I don't have a tattoo. Maybe I need to get an Edward tattoo. I don't even know. Who, I don't even know who Edward is. Oh. Team Edward. Oh, Twilight. Those Twilight, Twilight movies. Oh, now I know. He's catching up. They now sparkle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The last one is uh, September 29th. Uh, Mid Dwight Terror. Midnight Terror. Mid Terror. Midnight Terror. <laughs> Midnight Terror starts. Midnight Terror starts their season October. Uh, not October. September 29th. We start the Midnight Terror season, and that will be, uh, that's also right on 111th Street, and they're right across from Chapel Hill Cemetery, and um, be there with them every weekend for the whole month of October. I'll be out there doing, and they're a great haunt. They're, they're really a lot of fun in that, so yeah. So check out some of these things that I got going on. Check out some of the stuff these other folks have going on here, and um, no lack of things to do for the month of October. I tell you that, there's all kinds of stuff going on. Well, now, Leland, we haven't seen you in a while. It's you, been a while. You changed jobs. You're doing all kind of new things. You bought a bucket. You bought a Halloween pumpkin of candy for us. Look at that. We always bring stuff to eat on this show. We bring food <laughs> things. We always bring food. I got this today. And I got me. some too. I, I have got two. <laughs> I got this today was my gift from Ron. Ron brought this for me. Isn't that cool? I love it. Isn't yeah. it? At, uh, you grow your beard out, that's you. That's what Leland said. When he saw it, he said, looks like Ron. Looks like <laughs> me. Yeah, that's, that's I thought it there. looks like Dominic. That's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anyway, I'm just going to start introducing guests and let them talk. Dominic, 
Nice to have you back, sir. It's good to be back. Thank you for coming. How have you been? Oh, wonderful. Yeah, thank you. Very yeah. good. Very well. It's been a busy summer. It's been a good summer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's been it nice. Definitely it's been has. a good summer. Yeah, it's been very nice. And the fall is looking even more promising. Yeah. So good with that. And then Ron? Well, uh, glad to be back, too, Bob. Good. I'm glad you're it back. It was really cool seeing you Saturday. Yeah, it's always nice to see you. Uh, yeah, but, unexpected, um, you came walking was, now, What was the name of that event? What did they call it? They had some name. I don't know what they called it. Because somebody said something, and I said, yeah, I'm doing the event over at Chet's Melody Lounge. It's one of the Paracons. I know Carrie um, Bean, Carrie and her husband, yeah, they, they sponsored awesome. it. Oh, yeah. She, she they're really they're good people. They really are. They're great people. Yeah. And um, that was a nice. it's nice to see everybody over there with that. Yeah, it's good. That's why sometimes I, li I like doing the events. But I don't like doing too many of them. I just like, you know, a couple of them a year or something like that. I'm fine with that. That's enough for me. Yeah, this, this time of year, yeah. it's, it's, it was the third annual Scarefest and Spooky Market. Scarefest and Spooky Market. That was Saturday. That's what we did that. I did yeah, that. And I, did, being. and I did the game show. I did uh, Let's Make a Deal with the Devil. We did that for a little while. They had all kind of stuff. They had a band over there. They had... Um, a screen contest. Kylie O'Connell was the MC over there with that, and there were all kind of vendors, all kind, there was all kind of stuff. I did palm readings there for a little bit. I didn't stay long with the palm readings, and then I left. Um, I was just getting a little tired, and uh, for me to do the palm readings, when, once the night starts coming, it gets it gets a little dark. They weren't too well lit there, and then with the band, with the music, it's just I'm just shouting at people that are sitting right next to me, so it's a little hard to do. So that's why I kind of left. Uh, not that I didn't mad at anybody or anything, but I just left for that reason. But. Um, it was a nice event. Yeah, nice. The costumes, yeah. the people in costumes oh, yeah. that people, showed up people love to do that. were yeah. awesome. It, it was, yeah. They always yeah. get a nice following at these things. You get, you, all these people that kind of come, you know. Spur of the moment thing, I saw that it was there, and mm -hmm. it was going somewhere 15 minutes away. Oh, so you weren't scheduled to come. You just kind of showed up. No, I, I, I had literally seen Carrie's post, posted it myself, Oh, okay. and just kind of Google mapped between this event and that event. Oh, and okay. Was like, so you were between events, and you figured, well, I'll stop for a few minutes and make an appearance. Yeah, and it turned out to be more than a few minutes. Yeah, well, I, I would have liked to have stayed longer, and I showed up. Yeah, then that's all right. You know, hey, but, you, you made the attempt. You know, you showed up, and that was good. But uh, what yeah. a cool scene, good people. Oh, yeah. 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 So now what have you got coming up? I know you've got some things coming up. Oh, we, oh, we do. Um Coming up October twenty eighth. Who's, who's the We Do? We should probably you should probably introduce yourself. Okay, let people so, know who you are, what you do. Uh, the We Do right now is the Northwest Indiana Pagan Pride Day. Pagan Pride Day. Northwest Indiana Pagan so, Pride. Uh, GCPP, which is Matt and Twyla, awesome people, love them. Um, Northwest Indiana this year, we are finally after seven years. Hmm. Of being absent, having the Northwest Indiana show. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, Mambo is speak one of the speakers. <coughs> okay. We have her, Reverend Laura, Laura Gonzalez, Jack Chavez, you know. Yeah, Jack, Chris of course, Nino. yeah. Um, so that is coming up. Who is that, Chris 20th. Nino? Zanino. Yeah. Zanino. Oh, yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. A lot of these names I know. Some of these people I don't know personally, but I know the names. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you know yeah. right there. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we welcome it back to... Northwest Indiana. Okay. And uh, it's going to be a wonderful event. We've been working on this for months. Oh, yeah. These things take a little planning, as we all know. Uh, yeah. Lake County Fairgrounds, October mm -hmm. 28th, um, 10 to 6 p.m. And it promises to bring back some uh, paganism, witchiness, voodooism mm -hmm. to Northwest Indiana. There's a lot of people out there. Northwest Indiana has sort of a, it's a different vibe. Yeah, it is. Gonna it's going to be straight up. It's, 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 a, it's a more reserved and more quiet. More yeah, Bob, it, it really yeah, is. You're going to find it. When you find small towns, rural areas, that type of stuff like that, they're, they're there. The city of but Chicago, bless it of for course. its diversity. Yeah, any big, any big mm -hmm. metropolitan area, but smaller rural areas, small towns and that, it's a little harder for people to connect. You know? so, so, it's, so it's good that you have these things out in those areas. And yeah. that's... That's what we're doing now. Mm -hmm. So we're bringing it back. Promise to have a great event. Mm -hmm. um, plenty of vendors, readers, uh, lecturers, of course, food, ritual. And let's, let's make everyone in Northwest Indiana know they're not alone. Yeah. They have family. Sure. And, and you're safe. Mm -hmm. Come be with us. And that's what's going on. There you go. Northwest Indiana, where? You get an address or a place uh, for yeah, this location? Yeah, it's at the Lake County Fairgrounds. Oh, Lake County, that's right. You 889 said Lake County Fair. South Court Street, Crown Point, Indiana. Okay. It's in the 4-H building. 
So you want to go to the west gate, which mm -hmm. is G5 and G6. But uh, it's a wonderful facility. It's clean, you know, washrooms, uh, plenty of open space. This is a good place. They have the livestock show in there, don't they? But then afterwards, oh, yeah, but then yeah. they clean and it up. Lake after. County yeah, Fairgrounds is yeah. uh, good for, you know, yeah, the, yeah. You know um, yeah. all sorts of shows. Cool. Mr. Dominic, what do you got going on? But besides, of course, you'll be at the Lake County Fairgrounds. I, I won't, You actually. won't be there. Oh, what well, the have, heck with you? Why do I even bother? I have, I have uh, <laughs> some other, yeah. I, I've been working on a lot of uh, deep personal things. Okay, like, all right. Like on my path. So uh -huh. uh, the summer's been a, a few types of ceremonies that I've never been a part of before that right. have, have been pretty life-changing. So mm -hmm. there's been this whole big paradigm shift and. uh I'm working on some things with a, a collaborator, close friend, my sister Katie. Shout out to Katie at Fresh Gaia. Um, we're putting together some, uh, we do uh, like Reiki fire circle, uh, you know, some meditational stuff. Uh, we, we've got some smaller things that, that she mm -hmm. and I are putting together, but my life has been steeped in my other path. That Good. Uh, okay. A lot of things have been happening. Uh, there's been a lot of movement, a lot of moving parts. Um I changed as long as it's jobs. all good movement and good mo oh, and movement in the right direction. You definitely, know. good, uh, good. I changed jobs unexpectedly. Uh, happened while I was on vacation. Oh, uh, so you're not doing the? I'm still doing them, oh, just somewhere doing, else. Got it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It was right. a, a a weird situation, but you know, hey, I, you know, I'm leaving uh, it in the usually, past. Usually, what know, happens so, in life is yeah. when things, everything happens for a reason, yep. and usually in the roundabout way, the reason kind of works out okay. Yeah. It does. Sometimes at the time it may seem like a horrible thing, but then down the line, oh, yeah. when you get down the path, you kind of mm -hmm. say, hey, this was all for the best. So Yeah, yeah this has been a, yeah. a busy season for powwows and, and certain other like indigenous ceremonies, so I've been really busy as well. Yeah. Um, I've been keeping, I, we haven't spoken in a while. I've no, been yeah. Mm -hmm. Keeping fire for a few different circles, uh, uh, three or four different circles, so my weekends are totally gobbed up and... I've got, you know, uh, travel, lots of travel back and forth, you know, oh, all good. four okay. different directions. So yeah. uh, I'm keeping myself going around the circle, going around the loop, uh, the hoop in a good way. So uh, it's been busy. It definitely has been busy. Um, Everybody you talk to has had a busy summer. Oh, it's been, yeah. It's been a good oh, summer. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, there's been a lot of uh, uh, stagnated energy has been pushed, and, and it's all kind of moving for a lot of people. Um, you know, a lot of people have been working on goals, and uh, it's it's starting to show now that ah, okay. uh, a lot of people's wheels are, are now spinning a bit more than, and and moving, actually, instead of just spinning in a circle. So the fruits so, of everybody's labor are starting to pay they're off. They're starting to. Oh, I yeah. mean, we're, is, we're, we're, we're heading into, uh, what is it, tonight, Moon's in Leo, so we're at a point to celebrate our successes, we're, we're, we're at a point where we need to start working a little more creatively, so... Uh, so even the astrological changes are kind of starting mm. to help us out. This a little is bit the too. time of harvest mm. for the fruits of our labor. Mm. From yeah. Spring when we plant seeds, summer harvest. we nurture. Summer we, we grow, we care for, and then fall we harvest. Mm. Absolutely. The fruits of labor, yeah. Just the other thing, too. I, I don't know why I didn't write this down, but it was just on my mind. I, for, for some reason, it just came to my head all of a sudden. Uh, today, September 11th, is, of course, very significant in all of our mm. lives. It's mm. the 22nd anniversary of the horrible attack, you know, 22 years ago, where just about 3,000 people all lost their lives with something in that horrible attack in New York City there. So, um, yeah, just something that, yeah, you know, that's one of those events that I think uh, people that are around for it and that will remember, just like people that remember the Kennedy assassination mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. You remember what you did and where you were at mm -hmm. and where, you know, what, you know, mm -hmm. all those kind of things like that. That'll be one of those things that's going to always stick out in people's minds, you know. And we should not forget that, that those people didn't just die, you know, like that for... Well, it was a useless death. It was really was. It was. It shouldn't have been. But um, we shouldn't forget that. So I just wanted to bring that in. That's that's all with that. Mambo J Marie. Nice to meet you. Nice to have you on <laughs> here. I don't know. You are a voodoo priestess. I am. You are a voodoo priestess. Now, is your voodoo more Haitian West Indies voodoo, or you're more New Orleans voodoo, or you're a combo of the two? I am a combo. So. Where are you from originally? I was born in New Orleans. Uh -huh. moved, <laughs> moved to Chi Town. Yeah. Um, my family moved to Chi Town, and we brought our traditions with us. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you were in the right spot in New Orleans. That's the voodoo capital of the United States. 
It is, and rightfully yeah. so. Yeah. Yesterday mm-hmm. was Marie Laveau's birthday. So yesterday was her, yesterday was Marie Laveau's birthday. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. It's been all day in service celebrating her. And her um, death was um, I should know this because I have a her, her death, death was in August. Her death was in August. I know that just passed by too. Yeah. Yep. Her death, Marie Laveau Glapion. Yeah, the her widow Glapion. Glapion, her se- her second husband. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. the rule in France is when your husband passed away, you're known <coughs> as his widow. So yeah. the widow Glapion is how she passed. That's it. That's Absolutely. how she goes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Did you know that? Sure. <laughs> oh God, yes. You can't go to New Orleans and not know that. Yeah. True. <laughs> Her spirit's still very active in the city. Very. Yeah, she's still she's still very much active in the city. From time to time, people claim they see her too. Definitely. From time to time. Yeah. For a, for a while there, after she passed away in the 1880s, and that people saw her, but a lot of them mistake her one daughter for her because the one daughter looked so much Marie like Laveau her. Too. Yeah. Yes. Her daughter looked so much like her that they thought oh, she's still walking around. No, it was actually the daughter that they were seeing. So yeah. 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 Interesting life. Interesting woman. Very much. Very so. interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you ever want to read a good story, read, read um, I think it's Robert Talant wrote a book, a small little book called, um, Vo- one is Voodoo in New Orleans, the other one is Marie Laveau, the Voodoo Queen. So if you want to just sort of acquaint yourself with New Orleans Voodoo, two good books to kind of pick up and just sort of get an introduction to it, as well as a little bit of Marie Laveau's life and what she did and who she was and all that. Yeah. And uh, I also practice 21 Divisions, which is the Dominican form of voodoo. Okay. Um, so then you are a little West Indies and a little yeah. Haitian. Okay, all right. Okay. So do a, I do yeah. that. It mm-hmm. uh, has a little bit more mysticism involved, mm-hmm. um, uh, and a lot more regomon, as we like to call okay. it. Okay. Um, regomon being, for those who do not know. I was going to explain it. <laughs> regomon is like the series of events that we use to carry on a ceremony. Gotcha. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I... With the snake and the whole nine yards. Oh, the snake is fiction. We don't do. You that. don't do the snake. We don't, don't do the snake. snake. Oh, say some, what, some what's, do. What's the snake? I don't. Some do the, the voodoo with the snake. With the snake. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Some do the snake and the voodoo. Some don't. You know. Yeah. 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 It depends. Uh, it's all regional. It's mostly done in Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> when you see a movie, a lot of uh, American horror stories. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm totally anti-American horror story. <laughs> I, um, you, you know, some of the mo- the movies and things and all that. It's it's entertaining, and of course, you know, I watch them too and that. But when you see this, and then you actually see one of the ceremonies or something, you say, "Wait a minute, this isn't exactly the way it is." You know. It's not yeah, people it's, are very disappointed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like this yeah. is what happens. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's like going to Catholic church, and it pretty much is. So. Well, you're sort of tied in loosely with Roman Catholicism. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So people mm-hmm. are don't expect the Catholic prayers at the beginning. Um, they don't expect the amount of crosses that yeah. we have. And, and all the saints. Like, and all the saints. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, but yeah, absolutely love what I do. Yeah. Yeah. What is it that you do? What is it that I do? Um, what does a priestess do? Um, no. The priestess keeps the community from collapsing is okay. my best way of putting it. Right. Um, we minister to people every day. Mm-hmm. Um, we serve our spirits who help people. Even the playing field is the way I like to put it. So you have clients that come to see you with specific problems and things. And you yeah, nurture them like along. That. You help them and you, you counsel them and you do. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm right. kind of like a therapist with yeah. magic. <laughs> so sort of a two for one the two for one <laughs> there you go so yeah, i yeah. love it yeah good have you heard of, ever heard of, has anybody ever heard of clairvoyant varnish Mm-mm. nothing mm. no nobody ever heard of it okay mm. all right fine just thought i'd bring it up as long as nobody knows what it is i'm not gonna even pursue it for now it's actually it's a device i don't i think it's so obscure i don't think they even make it anymore uh, hmm. but it was developed here in chicago in the 1880s about 1888 and supposedly it was some sort of a varnish that you paint glass on. You paint it on glass, mm-hmm. and then when it dries, you hold the glass up, and it could detect people that were vampires. Oh, well. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Wow. Uh, new, it, 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 apparently, they took it seriously because a lot of newspapers had articles on it. Some newspapers were skeptical of it. Some said it did work. Some people said they had responses, but, you know, eh, whatever, you know. I've been trying to find it, but I think it's just so old and so obscure, I, I don't think it's even around anymore. But, wow, that's interesting. But, yeah. But I mentioned this to everybody, and mostly it's a response I get, no, nope, never heard of it, never heard of it. <laughs> I just know yeah. how to find vampire crypts, which I think is hilarious. But yeah. Yeah, okay. I did, um, I do mediumship well, you got a, classes. You, you got a huge cult down there in New Orleans. Every time I, they find me, I, I went to New Orleans in February, they find, they come up to me, they find me. I start talking to them, vampire, oh yeah, I'm a vampire. Yeah, yeah they yeah. find me. You're, vamp- you're, having, you're having a big uh, following down there. You're eventually you're going to have a whole vampire neighborhood in New Orleans. I think it's so. It's leading that way. Yeah, it's leading that way. I can yeah. see it. Yeah. 
Yeah. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. you oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. I was just saying yeah. that your spirits, pre- like I was telling you before the show, they talk about you. So anybody. So you find vampire crypts. Oh, you don't have to find them. As long as you know what to look for, you uh, know where they are. What's a vampire crypt? And it's so funny because like one time I was teaching a mediumship class and I was like, oh, y'all want to see a vampire crypt? And the <laughs> entire, you remember? You remember? <laughs> and the entire broadcast went dead as I walked up to the crypt. And everybody was like, what, the, what happened? I was like, <laughs> they didn't want to be on camera. But yeah, there's a certain way. I, I don't know if I can give it away on the show. They're expecting, but t- they're expecting to see a physical crypt. Well, they're, they're, yeah. So, but when I was going to it, they were, they were the vampires were just like, "Bitch, what?" And they just shut <laughs> off. They just shut off the whole. Leland is thing. totally lost. You're gonna have to explain this a little more. Explain to me like a child, because I am one. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking? So about? vampires live in crypts yeah. in the okay. indiscreet places in the cemetery, and there's a certain way that you can find them. And I was giving a class to my mediumship students, and I was like, "Ooh, here's one. Y'all want to see it?" And I was on camera. And, like, the minute I started to walk, yeah, the whole <laughs> transmission went out. And um, one of my mentees and my son was with me. And my son, who is also clairvoyant, he was just like, yeah, mom, you don't want to fuck with them because they're, they're, they're not in the mood. And I was like, all right, back this up. <laughs> we'll do something else. I got a part two. What's in one? Like, what you find one, what does it look like? Can you paint me a word picture? I can show you. Oh, well, I can't. I can't well, paint you a word picture. Because I'm not is... trying to have. Have you ever seen um, what's that movie, uh, Salem's Lot? Yeah. So I'm not trying to have one floating outside my window talking about let me in tonight. <laughs> I'm good. But I will definitely show you off the show. All right. For sure. Can you? What about for our, our listeners? Can you paint a word? Picture? Um, a word picture is you will not see a beginning nor an end. That's the clue. It is alpha. And omega. I was just going to say the alpha and the omega. Yeah. yeah. Once you see the alpha and the omega, that's that's them. And mm. I'll tell you what that means off because, like, right. again, I'm not trying to be played tonight. No, <laughs> you don't want to bring anything in. Because you have to invite them in. Yeah. That that that's a real fact. You really do have to invite them in. Yeah, that's a mistake. I'm real good. So anyway. So anyways, yeah, moving um, on. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, teaching mediumship is one of my passions. Now, can you teach a mediumship? You can. You can help people develop their gifts. Like every okay, but does does the person see my, my theory on this? Just the theory that theory? I theory. Just the theory. Mm-hmm. Yeah, theory. Right. In order to be taught mediumship. There has to be a little something there to begin with. Oh, of yeah, course. Yeah, of absolutely. Course. I don't think just anybody can just go in there and say, okay, I want to be a medium. No. I want to take your class, and I'm going to be a full bona fide medium, and I'm going to, you know. I think there has to be a little something there. There has and to then be a spark. Then te- you can teach them to develop it. Yeah, to develop yeah. that spark. Yeah. But like I tell but people. But see, many people, I think, are misled. They sign up, and they pay the 50 or 25 or whatever it is for the class, and they go in, and they say, oh, I didn't become a medium. Well, oh, yeah. Do, 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 do. Yeah, maybe. No, that's not know, how it works. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I think there has to be something there to begin with. I'm not going to, like, yeah. touch your forehead and be like, yeah. you can see ghosts now. Oh, yeah. No, 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 nope, no, 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 doesn't work. Well, yeah. in, in part, I think, <laughs> they have to put the work in. It's it's kind of like That's when it. they go to a, a you know, tarot, runes, you know, bones, tea leaves, whatever. They can be told How whatever to it. it is, you know, that you spirits, but you have to do your part on this, too. Right. And people just expect the gift to be handed to them. And then they get on TikTok and they're expert. Yeah. Mm. After one class. Mm. So you've seen my TikTok. (laughs) (laughs) I can tell you all about your life. And there are people that will certify you, too. They will give you a certificate and you'll be certified in... Which is that dumb... You'll be certified in in paranormal... They'll certify you in anything, you know. Merlin didn't have... Certificates hanging in his desk. Well, that's because Merlin was centuries ago, and probably there were, when Merlin they was around, they would ask to probably, see Merlin's papers today. I know, right? There were probably ten <laughs> people in Merlin's day. There were probably ten people on the earth that knew how to read and write, and, and to begin with, you know, yeah. Yeah, I had someone tell me I had to be certified to be a deaf doula, and I'm like, since the fuck when? Like, hmm. we what is been that? doing it for centuries. So when someone is transitioning into the other realm, mm. it's like you can give birth to life, and you can give birth to death. So deaf doulas have the responsibility, kind of like a psychopomp, of walking them over to the other side. Oh, cool. I like mm-hmm. that. So it's like you can either get them close enough, which when I confront deaf doulas that are fake, they don't do that. 
So I'm like, do you check on them once you walk them over? Or you drop them off at kindergarten. Like I don't know what what are you doing? <laughs> and they <laughs> like, what are you doing? Like here, Junior. Good luck. See you later. Um, and they don't have an answer. So I think that's irresponsible. But you gotta see them through to the other side. Yeah. See them through to the other side. But yeah. See, with listening to what Mambo J Marie is talking about, and with Dominic's approach and his background. And where I'm coming from, these three are... Three different things here. You know, but here's the beauty of it, Bob. There are three different, what we have are, are self are things, right? Things. But these all three bottleneck to one point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything does. It's cross-cultural. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And that's real. Mm -hmm. This exists. It oh, yeah. Exists. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it just the different perspectives, but everything comes together as one. Isn't it lovely? It sure is. Mm -hmm. so, oh, yeah, sorry. No, 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 no. You don't have to be sorry about anything. For I'm, I'm having a moment. I'm having a moment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little vodka will do that to you. <laughs> Rum. <laughs> Rum. Is that what it is? Oh, okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> but the in like all of this, this is a real thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Huh? So, yeah. Anyway, it's something to be taken seriously. Now, people that don't really don't know much about it, like they don't know about voodoo, they don't know about Wiccans, they don't know about Drew, you know, they don't know those things, and they think, oh, these are people that are into witchcraft. They practice witchcraft, and people that do voodoo, they do bad things. They put spells on people, they put curses. They're not familiar with it. They don't know, and yeah. that's why I like to do these shows like this because we bring you folks on, and they see that they're not bad people. And what they're doing is not bad stuff, and mm -hmm. they're, you know, and so people get a little more familiar with it, you know, and that's what we <coughs> hopefully that's what we try to do, you know, so they they get a little maybe introduction into it, so they know they you know they listen to the show for an hour or a half hour or whatever, and maybe they walk away with not that they're an expert on it, but maybe they have a little bit better understanding of it, and now they feel a little differently of it, you know, yeah. so you know, these people have to be open minded and open hearted oh, yeah. to this. As, as in I anything. ran into a situation uh, Friday two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, short story. Uh, at a festival, music, the whole weekend, awesome time. I was walking through the crowd in a line, kind of stop, go, stop, go, and my triple goddess was hanging out of my shirt. Mm. And I'm standing there waiting, you know, to get back to get with my work buddies, and there was a woman sitting there. She said, you're pagan. I'm like, yeah. She goes, Oh, so you're evil. I'm like, no. 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 I'm not evil. <laughs> she goes, but you're pagan. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Well, if you don't follow the path of Christ, you're pagan, you're evil. Well. But you recognize my symbol, though, so why are we here? You know what I mean? There, there are some <laughs> people who are just, you know what? I avoided the situation. Deflect, move on. And not did the old uh, smile and blessed be. Oh, that must have gone to her gears when you said, what's it be? But, you know, um, hopefully one day the whole paradigm that being, being you know, Druidic, um, Wiccan, Buddhist, yes. mm -hmm. this will go, but there's still... There's still a clutch out there that's well, not it, it, given you're, in. You're always going to have a segment of people that... Um, it, not necessarily they don't believe, but they just are so, totally turned off from it. They just shun the whole thing, and they want nothing to do with it at all. They don't want to know anybody involved in it. They want nothing to do with it. It's just, it's just bad, just a very mention of the word. And it's it's not. Now, I'm a follower of Christ myself. I, I do that. But I also, you know, other things, you know, I, I accept them. I mean, other people, what their things are. I, I respect other people's beliefs, other people's. And I learn a lot from them, you know. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to change your faith or change your belief or whatever and become, but at least you have a better understanding of people. And by doing that, you get along much better with people, too. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I like when I do the little tours that I do in that, we, we do Chinatown, and I bring the group to a Buddhist temple. And I always tell them, I says, now, when you're going to go in, it's going to seem very gaudy to you. It's all red and golden and very different in the coloring, and it's going to just dazzle you. And I said, it's going to look strange to you. But I says, now think of them going into your church. 
someone mm-hmm. that's a Buddhist, and they go to your church. And just think how strange your stained glass and your pews and your setup is going to seem to them. You know, put yourself in their shoes. So this way you absorb a little of someone else's culture. You have a little bit better understanding of it. And you have better understanding of the people, too. And mm-hmm. then you kind of get along better with folks yep. that way. That's that just a feeling that I have. That was things. the beauty of Parliament of World Religions, mm-hmm. which was just... Oh, phenomenal. phenomenal. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, all these different beliefs that came together and marching mm-hmm. up Martin Luther King Drive with sure. all these who were just there together yeah. in unity. Yeah. So, just you know, respect everybody, you know. Out. Just try to understand everybody, have a little better understanding of You don't have to agree, respect but you can respect yeah, exactly. and make yeah. friends and part ways. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It's not tough. Yeah. yeah. What do you have to say about any of that? So, you're just totally baffled. Yeah, Lily's just <laughs> taking it all in. <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah. Anything came to your mind that you want to ask? Uh, oh boy. Now, now I'm flaking. I'm not in radio mode yet. This is our first show <laughs> in what, three months, and I'm looking over at my computer. See, I try to get him. I try to get him in the conversation. Well, we I all tried. showed up proper. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy! Mm-hmm. But that's what's nice. You know, like these different, fe- like the one you're having in the North East India. It's nice to go to these things. Something different for you to do. See something different, and there again, you're absorbing someone else's belief, someone else's culture. You're, you know, you, and then you have a much better understanding. You don't have You'll to walk hate. away from it with a much better understanding. You don't have to hate something you don't understand. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Agreed. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. So, I guess now the segue, like you said, that you can, like, you are a medium. You're a proper medium. You can see things and hear things and etc. Yeah. How did that come about? Were Sometimes, you just, like, hanging out in your bedroom when you're a little kid, and you're like, "What the heck is that?" And it scared you, or because it scared the hell out of me. That's for sure. Scared but. the shit out of me. But, <laughs> but here's the thing: I see my childhood experience through my son, mm-hmm. and I'm just like, "Dang, I was their kid, also. I get it." Um, but when I was little, I would see things, I would hear things. Um, one time, I was walking down a hallway with my grandma, who was also a medium, who taught me Bodo. And, like, it's this guy, like, floating straight towards us, right? But we had my mom on the other side, and my mom is, like, a, not a skeptic, but she's just, like, whatever. And so, like, this guy is floating towards us, and he, like, sits down, and he talks to me. And I look at my grandma, and I'm like, did you see that guy? And she gives me a wink, and I'm just like, oh, mm. fuck. What am I supposed to do with this at three years old? Um, <laughs> but it was like... It, they just start coming to you when they know that you're a vessel. And, like, when my son was five, he started astral planning, right? Well, are, you, are you excited that your son has this or not excited? <laughs> I was prepared. It can, be, it can be a blessing. It can be. Exactly, because I'm just like. It's, it's a two-way thing. Uh, it can be blessing. It can be curse. Pretty much any of this that yeah. we do can sometimes be. Blessing mm-hmm. sometimes can be cursed. Mm-hmm. It sometimes right. can. Because, I, I um, found that to be more, for myself personally, uh-huh. more blessing than curse. <laughs> but there are times, sometimes I wish I didn't know some of the things I know. Exactly. Because <laughs> um, he's the kind of guy that has friends on the other side. Sure. So, like, if he gets pissed off at somebody, something bad will happen to them. Like, his fourth grade math teacher couldn't stand him. Just mm-hmm. was treating him different. And I kept telling him, I'm like, he's not autistic. He's just spiritually gifted. And she thought I was fucking crazy. And I was like, no, he's just sitting at his desk hearing shit. Like, if he hears shit, then just, like, let him go off and be his own. Um, she was just like, no, you're just crazy. There's nothing wrong with him. Anyway, long story short, um, she took a trip mm. and lost both her legs. Ooh, and, oh, And I told my oh son. My. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> he was in fourth grade. And I'm like, kiddo, you got to stop wishing ill on people because the spirits hear you. And they carry that out. Is that a good thing to do, though? Is it is it a good thing? Even if it is somebody that you really just don't like, you don't mix with this person, you like oil and water, is that a good thing to wish something bad on someone? I, I mean, there, like we this. all, you know, none of us are perfect. Even yeah. me, as charming and wonderful and delightful as I am, there are some people you just don't get along. For me, with, you know, it yeah. might, it but might. But I don't t- wish them bad. I don't, you know, I don't want to do that to anybody. Yeah, but the way I tell people is like, you're not that you wish them bad. Is that you tell your spirits that you have a problem, and however your mm-hmm. spirits handle it, it's completely up to them. Yeah. You have to wash your hands. But you have to admit that's a little extreme. It you know? is. I mean, but to, they, you know, but to they, have, have the teacher go on vacation and lose two legs. <laughs> I mean. But the spirits see more than we do, you know? So Dominic was going to say something here, yeah. yeah. For me, it might take a while to get over it, but eventually I will start praying for that person. Yeah. That yeah. they get yeah. what they, they need, but in the moment, yeah, I have, I have my... 
have my moments of butthurt. Oh, we all do. You know, we're, so. hum- we're all human. Yeah. We all it's have just, human nature. I, I gotta let it go. I gotta yeah. move past oh, of it. Of course. But eventually, yeah, yeah they'll yeah, end yeah, up yeah. getting okay. Yeah, you, I'm, see, them, I, I'm, um, you know. I'm maybe, I don't know if you call that a little reverse of that, but mm-hmm. I'm, I'm more of a believer in karma. Mm-hmm. I'm like when someone thinks oh, ill of you or does ill in that, I feel like. It kind of comes around, and they're going to get oh, it yeah. anyway. Without me doing anything, oh, yeah. it's going to come back to them. Oh, yeah. And I'd much rather have it that way than have it on my mind that mm-hmm. I caused some harm to exactly. someone. You know, you yeah. know, that I actually caused some physical or otherwise harm to somebody. You know, although sometimes you got to admit, you know, they sometimes they say revenge is sweet, and you know, sometimes you know that human nature kicks in. And you say, ah, see, you got yours, didn't you? You know, mm-hmm. there it is. You know, but you don't like to be there. That That's way. from a lower vibrational exactly. plane. Exactly. Yeah, right you don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to get yourself that Let way. Let it go. You know, exactly. Because Let it go and Universe, move on. spirit, goddess, whatever. You don't know how many people gotcha. on a, almost on a daily basis that I come in contact with, and I tell them that. I says, what's happened in the past already has happened. And mm-hmm. kind of j- just yeah, leave it, it there. You can't go back in time and change it. Nope. So leave it there, and today's the first day of the rest of your life. Go forward and be progressive. Eastern Belia, uh, if you carry yeah. hate like coal and to throw it at someone, who yes. is that coal going to hurt? Yeah, that's why yeah. I don't do hexes or curses because I just think they're no. stupid. No, hexes and curses, no. Stupid. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah. Like, people will be like, I mean, that's just my personal opinion. In some cases, I'm just like, why do you want to hex some them? cases people Maybe are their own stuff. curse. Yes. In many in many cases, a lot of people are their own curse. So, yep. so, so there's no need for me or anybody else to put a curse on anybody because they're, they're, they're their own curse, you know. They go get it. Away and let it go. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah, yeah. Look at the bright side. My feeling is do something good. Even if it's nothing more than just hello to someone holding a door, you know, you don't have to go out and, you know, build a pyramid to change the world or something. <laughs> but just something, you know, something that you do that makes things a little better, you know. The butterfly effect. Yeah. 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 So mm-hmm. now some goodness yeah. and watch yeah. it just fly. Yeah. And good comes back to you. Yep. Good, good comes, you sow what you reap. We're talking about the harvest. Absolutely. Yeah. Do it without expectation. And I see, now, are, the these not, are these not the same teachings of paganism, druidism? Voodoo, Christianity, the same kind of teachings. They all kind of meld together. Doing good. There's a doing... core value. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I just kind of yeah. did that, you know. And I, and now in realization, it did that to branch off to, to understand and meet the different people of the world sure. to deliver the same damn message. Absolutely. It's yeah. a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In ways that everyone can understand in their own right. So now how do people get a hold of you, Miss Mambo, if they want to um, get a hold of you and y- use some of your services, either through mediumship, through one of your mediumship classes, um, whatever it may be, whatever services that you do. What do you, what are some of your services that you do for people on a regular basis a TikTok, that people would contact you? I do have a TikTok, but I hardly <laughs> use it. I, um, t- I don't know what it, oh, to me, TikTok is the sound that a clock makes. I don't know anything about, I'm so behind in technology. Uh, yes, I'm so, I'm so behind there. in technology. <laughs> yeah, I just don't, yeah. Stay away. Um, yeah. Um, so I have a Facebook at Mambo J. All of my socials are at Mambo J. Okay. So M-A-M-B-O-J-A-E. That's me. It's Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, cross the board. Same old me. Um, and my business phone number is 708-510-1714. That's Go it. Go ahead. Say, <laughs> say it again. Uh, 708-510-1714 is me. You can reach me there. Um, but the services I provide are pretty much helping people keep their spiritual sanity. Good. Um, mm. I am a believer in healing through spirit possession. So the spirits know more than I do. They know everything. Mm-hmm. Well, not they're not omnipotent, but, you know. Um, so I believe in healing toward through spirit possession. And, um, yeah. Now, I haven't looked at your TikTok, so I don't know your services. <laughs> but do you run seances? Do you do seances? I am having a MISA. Um, next weekend okay. on the 16th of September to be determined where because I totally forgot there's Riot Fest and then there is Mexican Pride so I messed up on the location but I will give that to Bob once I figure it out um, so a misa is basically where the mediums sit at a white table right the table's all white and we receive messages from spirits to deliver to people in the audience. So it's a very uh, tradition-filled um, 
type of seance that we do for 21 Divisions and Espiritismo, which is one of my practices. Um, I do also perform traditional New Orleans seances, which I'll be doing in October. Okay. And we will be Which I will not be able to attend. Because you're going to be busy. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we hold what are called fets. And fets are like parties for the spirits. Okay. So I'll be having a fet for our spirit called Gede, which is the spirit of the graveyard, um, the 28th of October. Okay. So I got a question, and I'm going to be remiss if I don't ask. What's the spirit vibe down here in the radio basement? There's tons of them. See, look at the water. I took a picture of it. The barometric pressure changes when there's spirits, and that looks like Sprite right now. Oh, okay. Hmm. And Bob has some on They're following us. Oh, that's for me. That's welcome to my world. They're extra protective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. y'all are, I mean, yeah. As long as it's good vibes, I guess. Yeah, I, I, I was going to say, I, <laughs> I was gonna say what you're seeing, are my, are my spirits good spirits, or are they not so good spirits they're very protective okay because you have a lot of stuff in your head that certain spirits can't have access to Ah, okay so if you're a sensitive and you're a medium like i walk down here that's why i asked you to be into your energy when i first met you mm-hmm. because i'm just like listen i don't want no problems can i get into your energy sure. and they were like yeah sure so yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. but if you don't if you're not perceptive and you get into bob's energy yeah, good luck <laughs> <laughs> People, people that I find, and I don't know how anybody else feels. See, I have a lot of theories on things. doesn't mean I'm right or I'm wrong. <laughs> These are just my theories on things. But just something I found out from personal experience and dealing with many, many people over long periods of time are people that have the least amount of spiritual convictions. Rather, than, And I'm not talking about Christianity. It could be mm. any faith, any spiritual convictions. Those seem to be people that are very susceptible to dark side, mm-hmm. the, the dark side of things. Mm. And they just sort of open themselves oh, up yeah. to it. Yep. And it seems that way. That's why it's good to have some belief in something. Yeah, you gotta believe something. in something. You have to be you have to be cornered in some something. Yeah. Some faith. Whatever it may be. You know, or, or a few things. Right. Personally myself I don't take chances. The Star of David, the Arabic symbol, the whole thing, you know. You know, I, I always feel like when I enter the next realm, I'm going to know all this stuff. I'm going to be so smart in the next realm. It's going to be a great answer. I'm just going to wish. Right. Then, when, then, then, when, then when I come back, I'm going to be telling people all about this stuff that I know. You know uh-huh. so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but th- it seems to me that that way, people that have very little spiritual uh, connections, convictions, they just seem to be very open to dark things, and dark side, and uh, just a negative life and, and things. Uh, because nature, those spirits yeah. know that they're easy to yeah, get to. Yeah, they're easy to get to. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. So yep. your Misa, what weekend was that? That is next weekend. Actually, this weekend, oh. the 16th. Oh, this weekend, the 16th. Oh, Lo siento if you can't come. Lo siento. That means I'm sorry. And it's oh, funny. yeah. I don't, I don't speak Spanish. Oh. Je suis désolé en français. Oh, no, that's taken. Bonjour what time is... <laughs> I mean... <laughs> that means I'm sorry. <laughs> I just meet you with another language that I actually know. Okay. <laughs> Well, you know a little bit of French from New Orleans. So, or how, you lived in New Orleans for a time, didn't you? I moved here when I was 11. Oh, but, all right, 11 But the old. official language of Louisiana was not changed from French to English until 1940. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my grandma spoke perfect French. Oh, and sure she always do. taught yeah. me perfect French. So. They speak French, but the French is a little different. <laughs> right. It's a little bit of Creole. The, for that matter, that, the English is a little different down there. <laughs> yeah. Everything is yeah. different. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Well, that's like yeah. the French up north. That's like in all, Canada? Mm, the Anishinaabe yeah. language has a little bit of French mixed into it. Yep. Because mm-hmm. like, yeah. of the, the, the trappers and everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The French, French influence was so rooted in New Orleans for so many, many years. French and Spanish. Mm-hmm. But I think more so the French yeah. than the Spanish influences. Yeah, very much Definitely. so. Definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah. we got a lot of uh, energy oh, down yeah. there from different cultures. Oh, my goodness, yes. That's why I love it. We're it's melting such a, it's pot. Such a, yeah, it's such. Yeah, it is. It's such, and, and I fit in just fine until I open my mouth up. Then oh, then I'm from the Midwest right away. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't. You don't know you have. You don't know you have an accent you until you go somewhere Chicago else. Accent, yeah, when you go somewhere else, you got that Midwestern accent. Yeah, yeah. We're like you're not from here, yeah. are you, baby? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you're like, no. So. See, you know, when you go to Florida, it's fine because everybody in Florida is from somewhere else. Nobody's from Florida. A lot everybody, of migrants. Everybody's from somewhere. <laughs> yeah, everybody's from somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. I cool. like this. Yay. Interesting conversation. I love this. Yeah. Anybody else have anything, Dominic, anything else you want to say or add? Or? I'm just grateful to be here again, grateful for all the experiences. Oh, you're welcome back anytime. I've anytime had you want to come uh, on. This summer has been 
so busy. I'm still processing a lot of things. And, and actually, with the help of Mambo J, uh, the mediumship course that I took, that I took with her uh-huh. ha- had helped me on a totally unrelated path and uh, on my rite of passage that, that I went through recently. It's uh, well, all the messages you. from the guides that they, they came through like butter. You know, uh, good, okay. To, so there's and a good I, and I have to tell so. you, I'm doing guys good. Work. And I have to tell you, one of my favorite guides that I reconnected with on this rite of passage, his voice, mm-hmm. Kelsey Grammer. It's Frazier. Oh, he that's me, hilarious. He comes to me talking like Frazier. And it's okay, just so like, I was going to say, as far as I know, he's still with us. I don't think he's left us. So here's all. the thing. <laughs> like, I tell budding, budding mediums to assign a voice to the spirits that they're, that they're getting so that they know who is who, whether it's their voice or insight. So I was telling them when I was a little girl, like, I would assign Kermie to certain voices. So I was like, assign a voice. It's not easy being yeah, Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So Kelsey Grammer is a good choice. But yeah. now you know it's a spirit talking to you and yep. Kelsey Grammer. I know exactly voice. which one it is, too. And, yep. and it's such a mis- mismatched voice. It's the main <laughs> thing. So it fills me with joy every time they talk to me. So now you know them, like, on a personal basis. You know, when you come, oh, yeah. you know, you recognize oh, yeah. Yeah, oh exactly. it's you again, you know. Oh, yeah. You get a name? I know who he is. Uh, I, I, they are. Right. Uh, it's just Colin Kelsey. They're known by a different name by most people. I, I won't necessarily go into that right okay. now, but let's All just right. say I call him Kichisabe. Nice, uh, nice, you know, nice. Uh, okay, because they have their spirit names. They had their name when they were here on Earth. Now they have their spirit name. Yeah, like in The Shining yeah. when, you know, right. talking to them. That's yeah. Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's Hollywood. The Shining. I don't apply. think The Shining's Hollywood. <laughs> Dead ass because the shiny yes, is Ron. so similar. Ron's just to dying life. to get some Hollywood's <laughs> a vessel. I'm oh, saying yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hollywood's a vessel. Oh, yeah. Can we talk? You know, Stephen King definitely knows some people who do. Yeah, movies. he knows what he's doing. He, he knows, knows what, what he's, he's, he's talking doing. about. I watch his movies. It, I'm just like, it has a good somebody. side to it. Has a, it has a good side. It has a bad side to it. Um, it's good if you know if you watch the stuff and it sort of sparks your interest in it and then maybe you want to pursue it a little further and that that's great. But sometimes when people see some of the shows and some of the stuff like that, they think they're going to go into this and it's oh it's going to happen for me in an hour and a half like it does on that movie or mm-hmm. on that show or something. No, no, it's a little different, you know. Yeah. And then and, but then the, the flip side of that coin is sometimes then when people do go into it and are serious about it, they're a little disappointed. Because yep. it didn't happen the way it happened in the movie, so you know I want that. You know it didn't work that way. You know so mm. <laughs> come see. Kind of like on. the craft, the movie, the craft. Oh, you know? mm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I went there. Yeah, you did, didn't you? Yeah, you know how many misleading to the anyway. Yeah. That aside, Mambo, anything in closing? You don't uh, mind if I call you Mambo? Is that all right? Or no, do you that's it's a title. Else? So by all means. Now you had another name before you were called Mambo J Marie. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> now, come on. Nobody names their baby okay, Mambo. Okay, hold on, hold on. Okay, so in Louisiana voodoo, you get your head washed before puberty. Got it, okay. So I've been Mambo since I was like nine years old. All right. But no one calls me that. Everyone calls me Jay. Like gotcha. If anybody calls me by my government name, which is Jamie, I think I'm in trouble. <laughs> Jamie, that's what I was getting yeah. at. I, so if anybody calls me Jamie, I'm like looking around like, what the fuck? It's like your mama here. catches you doing <laughs> right. something bad, right? Got it, okay. No, no one that. calls me that. I get you. Um, okay. But yeah, nothing. Just glad to be here and hanging out. Yeah, so, great. You, you, any of you, just welcome back anytime you want to come. Yay. Always. Something, something you right want to talk here. about or something you want to, you know, just come back on. Anytime you got a couple of free hours on a Monday night when we do the show, you know, I post them and just say, I'm going to Okay, fine. Come on. Up. You know, fine. Fine with me. Mr. Leland Pearson, how are you taking in all of this? It's fascinating. It's interesting. Yeah. Um Definitely want to talk more to you about some other stuff. Now that I have more free time, I'm going to start doing my documentaries again. Also, I have a film in the work that's going to take a lot longer than I thought. But other than that, just normal stuff. Hopefully. Oh, that's right. For a while, you were advertising about the film. Yeah. People to get in. The, the, I, I, I was in one movie once. Nice. Long time ago. I was in, I, well, it I was never. In the Shining. No. <laughs> <laughs> and, nobody, and, no, and nobody, including myself, ever saw a copy of this movie. But it was fascinating to do. I, I enjoyed doing it. It was really fun to do because, they, you know, you do makeup and then you go and you sit for an hour and then you do a second part of the makeup and then you sit and then you, you know, it's a, a very lengthy process to do and everything in that. And then how many takes you do at one after another one until they get it just right and everything. And then no one ever saw this movie. We should make, wait, did the movie come out? No, it never, it, oh, nothing, uh, nothing, uh, nothing. I never try to make a game out of it. Nothing. I gotta figure out what, yeah, never, I never even saw it. Yeah. One one thing that wasn't mentioned or I wasn't like joked mm-hmm. with about this episode, and I'd like to touch on it just so that we don't leave any, 
you know, leaves unturned. Eat the mushrooms, do the work. Mm-hmm. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's funny. Because when I do mediumship, I refuse to be in an altered state of mind. Well, of course, with mediumship. But, why? Well, yeah, I don't do readings altered. Mediumship altered. Now, do you just do intuitive? What do you do? I shouldn't say just intuitive. Do you do intuitive readings, or what kind of readings do you do? I do intuitive readings. My spirits don't really like me to use other tools because they feel like I don't need them. Okay. But, like, if I want the people to see what I see, then I'll use cards. I use bones. Okay. I scry, you know. So, because one thing that's res- a responsibility as a person who is a seer, because a seer is different than the medium and all that. There's, like, a whole bunch of little intertwiny things. But if you're a seer, you have a responsibility to not deliver people messages that they're not ready for. Of course. So, if I'm talking to somebody I know that needs, like, say, three sessions to be ready for something, and my spirits have already told me that they need three sessions, okay. um, I'll use the cards to, bait to get them in, you know, like, tell them what they need to know for this session. And then I'll be like, look, honestly, you're going to need another one. Not mm-hmm. that I'm trying to charge you more money. Okay. But... You're going to need another one okay. for X, Y, and Z reason. And most people actually are like, okay, that's cool. I'm like, because I'm, I'm just trying to tell you that I have yeah. to build it up. Now, you, uh, do you, uh, oh, geez, how do I say this? Well, I'm just going to say it. Do you say you, it. Do you charge them like each time? Like you say, you need three sessions. Do you charge them for each three sessions? Or do you say, well, no. Uh, you, you if they need three sessions, kinda... then I'm only going to charge them for one. Yeah, that's, yeah, what, yeah. that's what I was getting at. So you're not yeah, like, so most yeah. people are just like, when I as soon as I tell yeah. them like, you need three to immediately think, I'm like, I'm not charging you. Because a lot of people, that's kind of like a red flag that kind yeah. of goes up. When, you know, and you I've say, seen a oh, lot you know, of... I, we need to do another session. Fake mediums yeah. do that? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They'll be like, yeah. oh, fake oh, yeah. psychics, fake more, mediums. Yeah, there's a lot of that. Yeah. 50 yeah. more dollars. I love the messages <laughs> that come in. I felt your energy. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, oh, oh all or, 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 or the other one is, I'm, all the I'm Instagram drained. messages, I'm very drained right now, but I really would like to continue this with you. When my powers are a little stronger, and could we do this next week or even the week after? If you could come, you know, it'd be great. You know, sure. You know, eh. I don't get drained that easy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it oh, it does. It's it draining. Does, it does drain. I said not anymore. Oh, yeah. yeah. But like it used to be when I was younger that I would I just have days pass where I've out. done, and I'm going to have some days coming up. Um, and I've had days where I'm just exhausted. Yeah. Just, just exhausted. Yeah. And then I got then I got to watch because then an illness will start coming in. You get yourself too run down. You know you don't want to. Oh do yeah. That, you know. Oh yeah. 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 So you got to you got to watch. You know. You try to do as much as you can and as you know as you and that, but then sometimes it's just too draining on you and you say, "Wow, whew, I'm just exhausted. I can't even drive the car home." You know. I can't even yeah. move. Like after yeah. a possession, like oh, I cannot. Oh, a possession. Yeah, move. I would imagine. Yeah. I'm just like somebody. Now you've dealt with um. Roll me. Someone somewhere. that's. <laughs> Like a demon possession we're talking about? No. See, here's the thing. You don't want to invite a demon to possess you. Absolutely not. No. Because then it's hell trying to get them motherfuckers to leave. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, But (laughs) I'm serious. That's why there's certain tools you shouldn't fool around with. You'd be like, oh, yeah, sure. Take over my body. Give me your knowledge. I live here now. No, 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 no. That's okay. Um, But like regular spirit possession, like when I need a spirit's knowledge. Okay. There's one thing when they talk to you and another thing when you let them possess you. Because uh, when they yeah. possess no, you, no, 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 no. then you're no different longer... Different thing. Huh? Yeah, different, different thing. You're no yeah. longer you, I'm them. Giving they're, you they're draining you. They're, they're taking your yeah, energy. Yeah, they're taking your they're energy. Taking, yeah. So if you stay... They're taking your energy and then they go to someone else. Who knows if they're putting it into them or what they're... You know, you don't yeah, know, you know. so it's like you got to be real oh, yes. careful. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow, yeah. interesting conversation. I love it. Please come back again, all of you. We will. Yeah, yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. No, we will. Thanks, I think Scott. I legally have to be here. I think we're going to yeah, get legally contracted. possessed. <laughs> yeah, this well, is, thank you all. This is cool. Thank you. Yeah, thank you all for coming. Yeah, Connie, no, thank you so much. Thank you time for yeah, doing what you welcome do. Welcome back anytime. Ron, come back anytime you want to. Miss Mambo J. Marie. Thank you. And and I'm going to do one, one more well. plug. I have to do yeah, one more oh, plug. Absolutely. Keep plugging. Bob is by far... The master palm reader. Oh, geez. Well, thank you. Well, nobody's plugged to you yet, so let me do this. We That's how we met. You, and yeah, a lot of what you said happened. Okay. It, it was there. Yeah. Um, yeah I, you know, yeah, I'll get your palm read. People say Bob, that about, you know, I'm Follow sure his events where he's at. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, you find, you find those things where people's, 
say things about you and they say, oh, well, you're an intuitive and you're just... If people want to say that about me, that's fine. I don't like to make those claims. Yeah, the rabbi who praises himself has a congregation of one, you know, so you don't like to really, yeah, you know, it's it's best that your work just speaks for itself rather than you being very vocal about it, you know. Yeah. For a long time, I didn't like post it, like even doing this kind of stuff, like that, yeah, doing announcements and doing Facebook posts and it. But then people told me, they said, no, because we want to know when you're doing things or at the events that you go to and stuff. We want to know where these things are. So that's why I do it, you know. But Dope. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. Okay. So much for that. And thank we'll you, Ron. Here. And incidentally, the check will be in the mail for the $10. So. <laughs> <laughs> Cash well, thank you all for table. coming again. No um, no, it's just a no joy paperwork. doing these shows. And uh, I just love doing it because it's just amazing that the folks that come on here and pass through this studio here for the, I think, the 12 years I've been doing Paranormal Radio, before I was doing it here and even at the other place, I started looking at the list of people that have been on. And I've been looking at the list of how many people have passed away because so much time has gone by. Oh, wow. And that, and um, yeah, it's just amazing. That it, is one it, thing that actually came up at Parliament about the elders are passing. Yeah, yeah I was and, just talking about that. And the three of us are now here in this time where it's... I'm an elder! We need to step up. Not yet. Yeah, I'm Does an elder have to do with rank I'm or old. with age? Or uh -oh. is it a combination of the two? <laughs> what it has to do with, from my perspective, is... Age, yes, is a factor. And I'm an elder. But oh. wisdom. <laughs> but Wis wisdom. Wisdom and age, yes. I say, yeah, wisdom and age. But you I'm can have wisdom but not age. age. Yeah, you know, you're, yeah. you got and time to go. age but not wisdom. I, I just uh. feel, oh, shit. Um, the last, I'd say within the last year, I feel like I have things I have to do. Because mm -hmm. I just don't have the time I'm going to be here to do them. I don't mm -hmm. have that much time. Mm -hmm. And I've got to get rolling. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm doing some of the things I'm doing. Same. And I still got to get down to my writing. And I still got to do, you know, I got to do, and there's places I want to still see and stuff I want to do. And I said, I've got to get rolling. You know, I just don't have, I'm not 20 years old anymore. I don't have all those years in front of me, you know. Yeah. And then some of the years that I will maybe still have, maybe I won't be in the best of shape to be doing all that stuff, you know. I won't be able to walk as much. I won't be able to do all that. You know, who knows? We don't know we don't what know. the future don't holds, you know. Yeah. But um, that's why I want to start doing a lot of these things, you know, while I'm able to do them. Yeah, enough of that. But, yeah, I was posting to yeah. um, posting about how the younger generation wants to learn how to do things correctly, mm -hmm. but there's either a lack of elders or corrupt elders. Or they don't know how to connect. Or they don't know how to connect to You know, and then, too, when you're young, you're busy working, you're going to school, mm -hmm. you're doing that, your life is very busy with that, and you don't have a lot of time for these extracurriculars, mm -hmm. you know. And then later on, maybe the time will open up, and then they can devote some time to it and, and connect on that, you know. Yeah. You know, a lot of these a lot of events and things that happen, happen on weekends and that. Mm -hmm. And then people say, oh, yeah, that's great, you know, it's wonderful, that. but I work Monday through Friday, sometimes I work on Saturdays, I have one day off, i got to cut my grass, I've got to do this, i got to do laundry, i got, you know, the day-to-day -day things you have to do all in one day so right. it's hard for them to you know to do like that but sign of the times and yeah, the changes yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah 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 we still gotta help the baby okay mr john uh, that's it send us give our give us our x-files music uh -huh. You have been listening to Paranormal Radio with Bob Trisick from the John DeVita Broadcast Center on Monday, September the 11th, the year 2023. Paranormal Radio was directed by John DeVita and our special thanks to the executive producer of Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network, Mr. John Chaconda. This broadcast was pre-recorded on Monday, September 11th, the year 2023. Until next time, friends, thanks for listening, and take care.